Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dustin. Welcome back to another episode of Bushwhack and History in Buffalo. Today we are. Well, today's going to be a little bit of a, uh, a different delivery for you. I'm going to uh, present to you um, a montage of picks that I had culminated in one day where I started down here at uh, the foot of Porter, okay, at the at the Porter pumping station, and went uh, north, culminated at the Niagara Falls, okay. Now, what you're looking at here is a, a, a picture, actually. It's a, a a romance map of the Niagara Frontier, effectively my stomping ground from Old Fort Niagara, where the Niagara River empties into Lake Ontario, all the way to Grand Island, Old Ararat. I got some gravy to do on that one. And uh, up to the head of the river here, Lake Erie, where Lake Erie empties into the river. I have some data on uh, the river also to, to tail out this video. So what I'm going to do is play for you a montage, effectively, of um, all the, I kind of spot checked my area, um, did some videos and just showed to you, uh, or I'm going to show to you that uh, this is kind of a, the breadth of uh, the area that I have to cover. And I got a lot more stuff to do, a lot more work to do, uh, a lot more boots on the ground. Also, as I was looking at this, if you draw your attention up here at the top left and let's zoom in, top left excerpt says um, Niagara Early French. Uh, form of Indian name or Niagara early French form of Indian name for river means neck 1650 the neuter nation here destroyed by Iroquois Confederacy of which Seneca's were keepers of the Western door now those of you who are returning subscribers and fans would um, be familiar with that name because well earlier today I met had the honor to meet uh, this gentleman Mason Winfield who was an author and a local historical researcher and paranormal investigator and uh, haunted tour guide of Buffalo. And um, he is also the author of a book that I have. Well, the book that my wife found. Okay, so what a milestone and what a pleasure it was to um, meet Mason earlier at uh, the Roycroft Inn, which is... Um, you can get to my IG from my YouTube page, uh, bottom right of my top rocker picture. Hit that and it takes you to IG. And I do auxiliary research here, and you can actually see. I track my stuff. I throw uh, truth drops out and stuff like that. Whatever. You guys should know that. But, uh, yeah, I met Mason earlier at the Roycroft Inn. And that's his latest book. He's an, also, he's an author. This is his first book signed my wife found us and that's where i met him actually at the roycroft inn historic roycroft sacred architecture roycroft so i got more work to do with mason uh, we're going to network and uh, i could bounce stuff off him he, he actually offered insight as to uh, if i need, ever need help with um inquiries that i have about professional inquiries of how to uh, do my research bounce it off of him so that was very cool stick with me on that one now um, yeah, Western door fitting so uh, also synchronistic that this was in my my parents neighbors house hanging up on the wall ever since I can remember so with that uh, thanks for coming back we're gonna hit play on this play some smooth music and tunes and you're gonna see my area as I like to present to you getting out in the field you could do it too just be safe. And this is Boots on the Ground sleuthing the Niagara Frontier. Let's get it.
Okay, so there you go. That was, um, you know, like I said, if nothing else, that is to um, let you know that I got a, I can cover a lot of Terra as far as uh, with my research and what I have to do within um, within this uh, within this area, the Western Door. So um, I like to get that information out to you, and uh, when you come to my channel, uh, I like to for you to learn something. Not only, uh, of course, I like presenting the truth drops recently, but I, I like to present data, also my crazy ideas. But uh, I like you to learn something, and is we'll do some uh, information and some I laid out some gravy on that. What is the Niagara River and fitting with uh, you know. I kind of sleuthed the uh, and skirted the Niagara River in that little uh, presentation for you, starting down here, working my way up to uh, Grand Island, then into Tonawanda, as you've seen, and Terrapin Point right here. Okay, there you go. So, in fitting with water and um, how I live near it, and it's a uh, it's an ever present. Um, beautiful uh, part of my everyday life being able to walk by here Niagara River has well I think it's underrated in the sense that it's in its own class now we're gonna get well I'll track back to that but another aspect of Buffalo is we do have a sunset over the water because of the, the corridor of Lake Erie I've presented that before also Short of Lake Ontario, the entire Great Lake Basin from Superior, as uh, Gordon Lightfoot says in um, that great song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, from the Chippewa on down to the big lake they call Gitchagumi, which is Lake Superior, all of the runoff that happens in this basin gets funneled right down through the Niagara River right here and um, it's in its own class in that so it's 36 miles long and it drops 333 feet in elevation now when I say it's in its own class and it's kind of underrated I've never heard it in my you know watching history channel discovery channel I've never heard it detail I've actually um, understood this for myself it's in its own class of cataract. Now it's a cataract in the in the sense that it's it uh, goes lower in elevation and it's there's also a, a pretty fierce cataract within it. So it's 36 miles in length. That means that it's under 50 miles in length, but it's over 200,000 cubic flow of um, liquid flow or cubic flow rate, if you will. And I've always found that interesting that it never gets identified. It's got an enormous current in the pinch points of the head up here underneath Peace Bridge and down in the lower Niagara from the falls to where it empties into Lake Ontario. It's, I think, one of the fastest moving currents in North America for its uh, short length so again it's under 40 miles in length but it has an over 200,000 uh, cubic flow rate that's unheard of that's unbelievably fascinating to me not only that all of the Great Lakes Basin uh, again not from Lake Ontario because that's what it drains into but everything else drains right through here and there's a little interesting side tidbit here local gravy the dough rises in our uh, pizza a lot more than other places because of the minerals in our water, allegedly. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show some clips of what I've showed before, but about our buffalo intake that I uh, showcased in the beginning of that montage at the foot of Porter. So let's get into that. And again, we're gonna tail out with a, a fitting water truth drop. So, but right now we're gonna showcase the Emerald Channel and where we get our water from and it's got a lot of minerals in it and is that minerals and is the minerals in the water charging our benevolent city could it be
Let's watch this. Make your own decision. Use your own discernment. I'm just kind of showing you a path here. The intake is a facility which takes in all the fresh water into the city of Buffalo. Comes th through that structure. It's a three-story structure. Actually, it was a manned facility back in the day. The reason for this is there was ice accumulation along the, the perimeter of the structure, and this had to be removed. And this occurred until probably the 50s when the ice boom was installed. You go in, it has a center well where all the fresh water comes into, settles, very quiescent. In fact, that location where the intake is now currently is called the Emerald Channel. The reason it is is because of the clarity of the water. It's really an ideal location uh, for an intake. The first step in the treatment process is really having an ideal raw water source. In fact, this is the second intake that was installed for the city of Buffalo. The first one was installed right below the Peace Bridge, and that served for about 20 years until there was a, a pollution epidemic, actually a typhoid ep epidemic that came down through the influence of surface water. Once this happened, the city of Buffalo realized it needed another location. And after surveying, looking at how the river flows and interacts between Lake Erie and Niagara, that location was chosen because it's the most quiescent area in the river and it's an ideal source. So once you go out there, it's actually called that Emerald Channel because the water has an emerald look to it. You can see that not only outside the facility, but also inside in that center well. Also, that served about 150 million gallons per day into the city of Buffalo. We're about half that now, but still all the water that goes into the city comes through that structure. When you look at the, uh, at the intake, there are eight gates on the perimeter, and that allows the water from, the, from Lake Erie to come into that center well. And there's an open water reservoir in the center of that intake. That water then, which is very quiescent, enters into a center shaft. There's four gates that allows that. That center shaft goes down 50 feet into bedrock. It's a 12 foot diameter shaft, and then it meets a 12 foot or 12 by 12 tunnel 50 feet below the lake bed, and that has been tunneled, mined, under Lake Erie, and it goes from the intake structure all the way to Colonel Ward, which is about a mile offshore. At that point, the tunnel comes back up vertically. The water that enters our treatment plant it is pumped one more time, lifted about 20 feet, and it goes through our process of treatment by gravity. So really, it goes from the lake, through the intake tunnel, through 12 by 12 concrete tunnel underground, into our plant, and it's only lifted one time, 20 feet, and then by gravity again. And then it's pumped one more time and pressurized, and that's what you see at the tap. A little bit So there it is. I've um, rode a boat by that place many a times, and uh, I fished around that many a times, uh, not knowing the significance of that place and uh, the Emerald Channel. Now, the, it's emerald color because um, the minerals in it. And uh, again, um, Buffalo is known to have uh, the dough that rises in our our, our pizza. And uh, that's because of local is uh, the uh, local down low on that is because of the minerals in our water and it rises. Now is that something that is like effervescent with the um, could, it, could that even happen and affect the human body? Uh, these are the kind of ideas that I like to put out with this stuff. And uh, I like to cite a uh, experiment done by Dr. Emoto, where he does uh, research on uh, the crystallization of uh, icicles and uh, human thought and how it could be projected or maybe like a, even like a telekinesis where people were thinking of benevolent things as ice was uh, starting to freeze and uh, if you're thinking good thoughts and benevolent thoughts there were there was good crystals and if there was negative thoughts and malevolent thoughts the crystals didn't even form now i just like to cite that something to think about and uh, water holds the memory there's a lot of stuff about that in in media truth drops in media so um, if nothing else I'm not this one I'm not making any claims uh, just saying that uh, could it be and uh, 
why does the doe rise in Buffalo a lot more than other places? And we, now we, we don't just have good chicken wings. We got the best pizza. So I'll plant my flag on that, Buffalo. A lot more work to do. I hope you like that one. Please come back and uh, let's end it with a, uh, a, a funny one. So uh, with that, watch your six. Keep it sleuthing, and I'll report back. We're going to close out after this one. Take care, and be safe, everybody. Thanks a lot. You must be Carol Merrill. Don't spill any water. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Keep your thought as pure as the water. Yeah, this water ain't really that pure. <laughs> Neither are you. I give you this advice. Stay on the path. <laughs> you got it. I'm so afraid of the dark, too. <laughs>